Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, one of the things I like to do is take old games that haven't been opened up, open up, see what's inside, and uh, then try to play the game and see if they're any good. If so that sort of thing interests you and you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe now and hit the notification button so you can be notified next time I do a video like this, which is usually pretty often. The game I have here today is called Bugs Bunny Lost in Time, and it was released in 1999 by Infograms with Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. You can see here it's obviously Bugs Bunny. It has a lot of the classic Bugs Bunny characters like Yosemite Sam, Marvin the Martian, and this is Witch Hazel. I don't know who this is. Um, and it's basically like a PlayStation type game, a PlayStation 1 game. And actually, it was released for the PlayStation 1. And what I mean by that is it has these 3D graphics. It's like a 3D action platformer, I guess you'd call it. And, uh, you know, it says here, join Bugs Bunny in his first th ever 3D video game adventure. As he accidentally activates a time machine, is propelled through time. Bugs must travel through five different eras to find his way back to the present. In each level, puzzles must be solved, and switches keys, and a variety of useful objects must be found. So, it's like one of those sort of standard action platformers that they, they used to have on the PlayStation, like, all the time, basically. And uh, I love time travel games, although this is, like, sort of the, one of the lazy time travel games, it seems like. It's not really any time travel mechanic, it's just, you know, it takes place in five different eras, it says you're the Stone Ages, the Medieval Period, Pirate Years, the 1930s, and Dimension X. All those 21 levels all together. So you get the idea, basically. It's, it's Bugs Bunny. I love Bugs Bunny. I'm sure it's a fun game, but I guess I'll find out shortly. So without further ado, let's open it up. It's one of those sticker-sealed games. Even though there's no gatefold cover, it was sealed with these stickers on top and bottom. So you never can really tell with these if it's original seal or not, because it's very easy just to put new stickers on. But hopefully it is. And we will open it up and find out. I got my big uh, giant uh, Kahuna knife here. Let's just cut this tape here really easily. There we go. And let's see what we got. Uh, okay, not much. <laughs> see a cardboard insert. We got a jewel case. Let me take the whole thing out uh, if I can get it out. Or maybe not. Okay, we got the jewel case here. I don't think there's anything else hiding anywhere in there. It seems like that's it. Not much. Jewel case is not sealed or anything like that. Whoa. It's actually broken. You know what? This, I bet you, is not an original seal because, um, I mean, it's possible for jewel case to break like this pretty easily, but usually if that happened, there would be the piece, like, would be rattling around somewhere. The broken piece, obviously, you can't just go somewhere, so... If it's not here in the box, which I don't see that it is, then this probably was something that was resealed. Let's see. Um, oh, wow. The CD has like a really bad um, mark on it, too. I don't know if you could see it right here, but it looks like, I mean, it could be like bit rot or whatever, but it looks like someone like rubbed it with something abrasive, actually. So, wow. My guess is that this is not, a, <laughs> this was not an original seal. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it's good to open these games because people a lot of times leave them sealed thinking it's like a pristine seal and, you know, for whatever reason they want to preserve it for posterity and then their kid opens it one day and finds out that, you know, there's cockroaches living inside or something. <laughs> and here's the manual. It's one of those jewel case size manuals. Um, black and white it looks like. On his way to Pismo Beach, Bugs Bunny accidentally finds and activates a time machine. It's like... I should have taken a right turn in Albuquerque. I can't do the voice of Bugs Bunny, but uh, that's like classic stuff from him. Controls, energy levels, pickups, inventory. Credits. A basic manual. But anyway, yeah, I mean, it definitely looks like this game has been previously used, unfortunately. But and the jewel case is like sort of scratched, too. Hopefully it's still good, and I'll find a fresh jewel case to put in here, but hopefully the CD works and I can load it up. And let's check out the game and see what it looks like. All right, so here we have Bugs Bunny Lost in Time. 
I skipped the uh, sort of the, the logos of the developers, so you can just see that on your own time. This game ran without a hitch on Windows 10, not a problem installing or running, and it has a really great setup program too. You can set up windowed mode if you want, lots of different resolutions. You can also choose between uh, hardware 3D or software 3D. The default is hardware 3D, which didn't actually work. It didn't show Bugs Bunny on the screen, but the software 3D mode works fine, and obviously my computer's fast enough for that at this point, you know, 20 years later. So let's start the game here. You'll see pretty much it's a typical PlayStation game. But it has some good voice acting. It sounds like Bugs Bunny. There's the typical Bugs Bunny tunneling through the floor. Here I am, Pismo Beach. Hey, wait a minute. This doesn't look like Pismo Beach. <laughs> I probably should have turned right at Albuquerque and... Ooh, like classic look at the line. size of this carrot juice dispenser. So, the 3D model can look a little better. Yikes. This is running in 1024 by 768, which is the highest resolution that it lets you run in. But still, the 3D model is not that great. But um, the voice acting is pretty good. It sounds like Bugs Bunny. It could be Mike Mate doing it for all I know, but uh, <laughs> it does sound like Bugs Bunny. Now, uh, where the heck am I? Maybe the person who lives in the silo will tell me where I'm at and how to get out of being at here. So I'm not going to show you this entire thing here. How do you do? My name is Merlin, and I'm a sorcerer. Yeah? Really? A sorcerer? Come on, let me see a sorcerer. Huh? Please, please? Of course. Anything to oblige a guest. <laughs> sort of classic Bugs Bunny cartoon type of thing here. You know, that's a good trick, Moyle, old Goyle. Can you do this one? <laughs> I'm going to skip the rest of it if I can. But you get the idea. And now we go into like a pretty standard 3D game, like I said. And frankly, you know, the graphics are is, is okay. You know, for 19, this is probably the best you could have done in 1999. But it, it's very... It, and there's nothing wrong with the animation or the speed. But he tends to move sort of fast, and I guess he's a rabbit, and it makes me feel a little jerky. You know, I, I, get, I got nauseous when I was playing this for a few minutes. You can control the camera with Q and W. I'm using keyboard controls. I think you can also use a gamepad. Right now I'm using keyboard controls. So you can at least control the camera, with, like, thank goodness. But, and there's a nice tutorial section where it tells you, like, what to do here. So I'll press R. To avoid awakening someone, use the sneak action. It can also be used on fragile grounds. So that's like the way it tells you what to do. And then you go here, it says S is to sneak. So basically, if I try to walk across this beam without sneaking, I'll just break. If I use sneaking, then I can get across. And I, I don't know if that's an enemy. I didn't do this before, actually. This is also the tutorial part. I'm, I'm just to collect a certain number of carrots so that I can uh, get back to where I'm going. What happened there? What is he freaking out, that guy? Let's see if I can look at this here. Jump and press the dive action over a rabbit hole to get under the ground. To exit, reach a hole, and jump. So that's cool. They're telling me, this will show me all the mechanics of the game, basically. But you, I mean, so I'll, I'll go over here and I'll probably tell you which keys it is. Yeah, so jump and then R, action key. It's down. <laughs> now I'm in the ground. I go over here, I guess, and I got that, which is what I wanted. The whole point of that, I guess, was to get that thing. Oh, there's a carrot here. I guess I want to get out of here. So, there we go. Wait, there we go. Anyway, you get, you get the idea. I still don't know what the heck that is. And I'm going to forget all the keys. So, if this is a real, you know, playthrough, I would definitely try to get a... Uh, controller and see if that works but I mean you get the idea I mean that we can show you I'm sure you jump on enemies heads and you run around and collect things and I mean here there's an example of you know he's trying to get some carrots so we can go up here uh, let's see D is jump D D and then while well, jumping with the D key press the crouch to land softly at a red box so I have a shadow that helps me but it's still not so easy to do this I think I missed it <laughs> If you don't spin properly, then you fall, like, the box, the TNT basically explodes. You don't lose a life, but you don't uh, actually, you know, get up there. I'll try one more time. But honestly, like, the, the motion is a little jerky. I mean, this is not like uh, 
Super Mario 64 quality or anything like that. I mean, it's okay, but it's just a little bit too... Nothing even here. There was a carrot here before, but I guess I think I should look at the, the sign first, and then the carrot will appear. But you get the idea. You collect enough carrots, then you can go back in the time machine, which is over here in the corner, and you can go to, to the next area where I'm sure it'll be not just tutorial, but actually enemies and to avoid and to fight and stuff like that. So one time I'll actually sit and play through this, but I guess overall, I think the graphics are okay, but I don't necessarily really like the fact that it feels so jerky when I'm moving around. I can rotate the camera freely, which is nice, but he just, I don't know, he just there's something about the motion which just makes it a little more nauseating than it needs to be. The voice acting obviously is top notch, and hopefully that will continue throughout the game to really give you the cartoon-like experience. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you play this game, please let me know what you think in the comments. Or if you haven't played it, let me know what you think it looks like. Please like and subscribe and share if you haven't done that already. And we'll do this again real soon. Have a really great day, everybody.